Many teachers who use Exit Ticket report that the strategy with the greatest impact on student achievement is simply giving daily exit tickets. This end of class check for understanding drives your class culture by setting goals with your students about what you are expecting them to master. In this video, we're going to look at 10 steps that you can start doing in class tomorrow if you want to use a simple but highly effective strategy for using Exit Ticket. So first of all, you want to decide what the skill is that you are assessing. Um, we're going to take an example of an Algebra 1 class, just a classic example, where I've taught my students how to um, solve two-step equations. And in this class, um, I want to use Exit Ticket to assess whether or not students mastered this concept at the end of class. So I've actually already created a couple Exit Tickets. I set uh, my, my options here, assigned it to today's date, and linked it to my four classes. I've linked it to my solving, should be two-step equation standard, so that it calculates in my students' scorebooks. Um, the question that I chose is a multiple choice question. I chose multiple choice because I wanted to solve this three wrong ways also and try to trap students into misunderstanding so I could diagnose what corrections uh, I need to make with which students. Uh, when I actually get to class and I have my students log in to Exit Ticket, they're going to go to exitticks.com and they're going to uh, either sign up for an account or uh, just use their login that they already have. And on the wall, I'm going to project the classroom view. And the classroom view looks like this. You click on the ET button here. And I've got my two tickets available for today. Um, after telling all the students to log in, um, input the class code if they need to, I'm ready to give this first ticket. And the way I give that is by clicking on this hidden button. Um, but first, if this is actually in class, I'm going to set some expectations with my students. I'm going to say, first of all, uh, when you are done, I'd like you to close your Chromebook, whatever they're using, um, and I want you to start working on your practice. And I want you to continue to be silent when you're done because I want to respect everybody who works at different paces. Uh, after checking for understanding that my students understand those expectations, I'm going to press this hidden button. It gives me two options, the student counter and the heat map. Uh, the student counter is going to look like this. Tells me how many students are in my class, how many are logged in, and how many completed. If I click on the heat map, I get this image right here, and I can see all of the students. They can see their anonymous ID numbers, and they'll get either a red or a green, depending on whether they got quest the question right. When everybody's done, again, I click on the reteach tab, and I can go over the problem. Here we go. We've got a class that got 67% of them got it right. I've got a bunch of greens, a bunch of reds. I want to figure out a way to make sure that I target the misunderstandings in these students. So there's a couple ways to do that. One is as a whole class reteach. Um, I asked the class, all right, so 68% of us got it right. I want to do much better on the next ticket. So let's avoid some of these common mistakes. What would you have to do to get x equals 1 and why is that wrong? Similarly for x equals 16, those students added 8, but then subtracted 2, which wasn't the inverse operation for 2 times x. Uh, and 11% of the students did that mistake. So I'm soliciting this whole student voice in this whole class conversation to identify some of the misconceptions that are in the room. Um, another way that I can do that is by using the teacher view, which you can toggle over to pretty easily, going to that class that got 68%, and seeing exactly which are the students who made those mistakes. If I click on the reteach page here, I have a nice list. I can call these two students up for a quick one-on-two -on conversation about why x equals one is wrong. I can put these, pair these students up with a couple students from column B to, uh, to do some peer instruction. Uh, however, I want to respond to this data to make sure that these students are understanding their own mistake. Um, I might also just check in with them. Um, I might bring my tablet over to their desk, click on Jose, put this down next to him and say, all right, so take me through your thinking. What did you do? Why is that wrong? Um, and when I've done all that reteaching and in that process, um, I can then click over to the second ticket um, and make it visible for the students. Again, that same process. And let them take question number two. And then I see, all right, so our score went up. I want to celebrate them. 
Uh, there's still two students who didn't get it, and I might keep them in the last couple minutes of class or pass the bell to address those misconceptions. Um, again, in that reteach process, okay, so why is x equals 4 wrong? Why is x equals 3 wrong? What mistake do you think they made? Uh, celebrate my whole class. I want to write 93% on the board. I want to uh, encourage them to beat 93% tomorrow, and I want to celebrate them before they go. Uh, and I want to tie this to doing well on the homework. And the really great thing here is that these scores stick around. So if I am wanting to look back the next week or the next month about how students did on this ticket, long after I've forgotten about it, uh, the ticket will live in the calendar. If I go back to that day, um, I can click on the ticket itself, and I can see how students did on each question or on the ticket overall. I can export scores to an Excel document, um, possibly to import to a grade book, um, or I can simply use it to inform how I want to spiral back on specific skills, what were misunderstandings that I need to address the next day in class. Um, and I can also look at the scorebook that's automatically calculating in Exit Ticket. Um, it is a standards-based or mastery-based scorebook if you've inputted your learning targets. Otherwise, it's just a time-based scorebook. Um, and if I go to period 5 where they just took the ticket and unit 2, solving two-step equations, this column right here is that ticket that they just took. Uh, I can use this either to inform my own decisions about intervention with students um, or I can have students look at their own scorebook in their personal student account uh, to make decisions about which skill they want to review. And so as time goes on, I have a good sense of which skills my students have mastered um, and which they haven't.